So we're fighting a couple of wars now. What well, we call them wars, we're basically just murdering a whole bunch of fucking shepherds. And what gets me is our callousness on the news. When we read out our dead first, because our lives are more important, other people's lives aren't worth as much. A bomb went off in Kandahar today, killing two British servicemen, three UN relief workers, and a whole bunch of packies. <laughs> well, that thing we do, the minute we stop killing the shepherds, we start building them a fucking hospital. Let's build these people a hospital so they're better able to cope with us the next time we're in town. <laughs> it's a bit like a rapist paying for his victim to take yoga lessons. <laughs> Work on the splits, baby, because I'm coming back. <laughs> I've always hated that thing the army do, where they give a medal to like a carrier pigeon or a sniffer dog that's helped them out or something. Must be quite galling if you had a son who died. Sorry, Mrs. McCready, I'm afraid that your boy's been killed by a landmine, but on the bright side, Bingo here retrieved his leg, so we've given him the George Cross and let him keep the bone. <laughs> Got this trouble now where people are scaremongering about Iran. The truth is, we don't know who's got nukes. We could all get blown up tomorrow by Sweden. Yes, we have destroyed your cities. Now you must turn to us to refurnish them. <laughs> Swedish people are a lot like gay German people. Hmm. <laughs> we have this whole debate now. How much should we torture people? Kind of a society even asks that question. How difficult is it to get information out of someone? Give them some cocaine. Give them some fucking cocaine. Yeah, he, he told us all about the secret training camps, huh? And a screenplay that he's been writing. <laughs> well, why don't Al Qaeda just employ people who are sadomasochistic perverts? We, uh, we tried pulling his fingernails out, sir, but he came. <laughs> Did you try the ball clamp on him? Yeah, he brought his own. <laughs> we should be laughing at terrorists. These people are a fucking joke. The pants bomber. A guy tried to set off a bomb in his pants. I wish he'd done it just so I could know that he was up in heaven with 72 virgins but no cock. <laughs> Should have done it on Ryanair, everyone would have been delighted to get blown up and actually land closer to their fucking destination. <laughs> I'm a pretty militant Muslim, as you all know. I'm all in favour of the full-length burqa, as it allows me to masturbate in Tesco. <laughs> Who doesn't like the burqa? It's like a sexual scratch card, isn't it? Scotland got into trouble for deporting Al McGrahy, the supposed Lockerbie bomber, because he only had three months to live, making him the healthiest fucker in Scotland. <laughs> it's hard to joke about Lockerbie, I admit that. Hard to joke about Lockerbie. People had a terrible time there. I mean, sure, they got some great fucking luggage out of it. <laughs> people said it was a disaster, the Al McGrahy thing. Wasn't it a disaster? The Scottish people trying to do diplomacy. Actually went quite well. Normally a Scottish person being diplomatic is someone going, with the absolute best will in the world, you're a fucking cunt. <laughs> well, thanks for that speech, Ambassador. <laughs> with these deep-fried Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> oh, while we're at it, while we're on the subject, what is it about people with cancer that they suddenly think they can run the fucking marathon? I've got cancer, I'm going to sponsor us. You feel like going, you have no chance of winning. <laughs> I'm only joking, obviously. If you know someone with cancer and they want sponsored for something, please sponsor them. There's a good chance that you won't have to pay. <laughs> I had a friend come up to me and say that she had breast cancer. She was going to cycle the Great Wall of China. Now, you can't say this, but you feel like going, you're the last person who should be cycling the Great Wall of China. You should be lying at home in bed, playing with your tits before they drop off. <laughs> she doesn't mind me saying that. She's dead, she doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Not really, right? This is all just jokes. <laughs> just relax. <laughs> it's not gonna get any nicer. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> but just relax anyway. I do a lot of good work myself. I don't, it's another joke. 
I spend a lot of time helping teenagers who've been sexually abused find their way out of my house. <laughs> you know those Somalian pirates? See, three or four years ago, weren't we giving all the money from Comic Relief to Somalia? Is that what they did with the fucking money? <laughs> For just 20 pounds a month, you could buy this family a speedboat and a grappling hook. <laughs> You get letters from people you've sponsored. Thank you for your parcel. I enclose a picture of me beheading someone wearing your Shit Happens t-shirt. <laughs> How you doing, man? What you doing? You're a stockbroker. What about you, man? You're a plumber. Fantastic. How do you know him? Plumbers and stockbrokers. Friends, what the fuck do you talk about? <laughs> Oh yeah, I made, made quite a bit of money uh, short selling on uh, Nike today. Yeah, really? I broke up a big jobby in a toilet. <laughs> How you doing, fucking Gigantor? You alright, man? <laughs> this guy, you're just fucking looking at me like I'm a big sausage holding a microphone, aren't you? <laughs> How you doing, big fella? What's your role in life? Lawyer. You're a lawyer? Fucking hell. <laughs> what type of law? Property. Property law. <laughs> Could you be more worthless? <laughs> it's not often I'll say this. Not often I'll say this. But you should stick your face in a meat grinder and go and live in the woods. <laughs> I don't mean this to sound horrible, I really don't. But I could watch you being raped and not feel a flicker of emotion. <laughs> That's not true, I'd be angry they weren't killing him. <laughs> a lot of my stuff gets cut out on TV, to be honest. <laughs> we did a round in Mock the Week one time, it was things you wouldn't hear on The Apprentice. And I went, this is the first time ever I've not been able to separate our two finalists. Margaret, Nick, hold my legs up, it's a rim off. <laughs> They had around one time things you would say that would change the atmosphere at a dinner party. And I said, if we're all here, who's looking after Madeline? <laughs> they fucking cut it out. They cut it out. Can you believe that? At first I thought, no, they're saving that bit for the Christmas special. Must be. <laughs> It was a bit in the Christmas special, they didn't show you, they actually was uh, things you wouldn't hear at Christmas. And I went, it's not rape, look, there's mistletoe. <laughs> I said to Daryl Breen, I said, I had a joke about rape and it would have fitted perfectly, but they just wouldn't let me put it in. And he went, that's rape in a nutshell, Frankie. <laughs> yeah. I did that show, Would I Lie to You, with Christine Blakely from the one show, and I said to her, I said, Christine, you're a very beautiful woman, you're a very talented presenter, why do you have to present the one show with Shrek? <laughs> do you know how difficult it is for me to masturbate with one eye closed? <laughs> she looked at me for a bit and she went, you're masturbating to the one show with a hand over your eye? I said, no, Christine, I wear an eye patch because I need both hands. <laughs> What must it be like fucking Adrian Childs? If that's what his face looks like when he's not coming. Jesus. Adrian Childs' face is sort of what I imagine Susan Boyle's arse looks like. <laughs> My favourite thing I tell is those anti-drinking adverts. You know, it's always like a drunk woman staggering about or a drunk woman falling over. I always watch those and I think, that's right, there's drunk women out there. I'll get my coat on. <laughs> I always practice safe sex myself. So what I do is I hang about outside an STD clinic and chat up women who come out looking relieved. <laughs> I love the athletics on TV. Do you watch the athletics? I think it's great, the athletics, that we all get together every few years and decide which country has the fittest black people. <laughs> so the Commonwealth Games ever was, was a big slave race. The Empire Games, it was called originally. William! I think my niggers are quicker than yours. <laughs> well, that sounds like a wager. 
It's ironic that they start those races with a gunshot, because that's how they used to finish. <laughs> I hate racism. I could never be a racist. I haven't finished hating all the fucking white people yet. <laughs> Do you want to see more drugs in sport? I want to see a lot more drugs in sport. Do you want to see someone run the 100 metres in 9.98 seconds? Do you want to see him run it in three seconds? <laughs> I don't want to see Dwayne Chambers running on steroids. I want to see him running with the legs of a kangaroo and the heart of a fucking leopard. I want to see him run so fast that halfway through the race, he disappears like the car from Back to the Future, reappears at the finish line as a very old man, shouts, beware China, and then crumbles into fucking dust. <laughs> Usain Bolt won that race in, what was it, 9.69 seconds? I can't do anything in that time. It took me 10 seconds to watch him do that. <laughs> Michael Phelps, the swimmer, he was too good as well, wasn't he? That's going to be boring at the London Olympics, unless we make Phelps swim in the conditions that the British athletes had to train in. Let's see how good he is once he has to get past a fat guy doing widths. <laughs> Tread water for a bit so he doesn't swim up an old woman's colon. <laughs> Get old people out of the swimming, by the way. What are they doing in there? Bobbing about like fucking jellyfish. Fuck off! <laughs> or we should ban all the swimming events and just have one event where Michael Phelps swims up and down while Michael Barrymore tries to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> Barrymore, man. I love the way that every so often the papers, or sometimes the police, will come out and go, perhaps we'll never truly know what happened on that night. Well, a dead guy's turned up full of drugs and spunk. I reckon I could take a fucking guess at it. <laughs> oh, what could have possibly happened here? <laughs> We've got a dead body with an asshole like a vintage golf bag. <laughs> Roman Abramovich, he's a sinister fucker, isn't he? I think because Abramovich is so sinister, that's why Alex Ferguson at Man U has had to build up a team of ugly men who look like they'd be impossible to kill. Like Wayne Rooney. How would you kill Wayne Rooney? If you put a bullet through the middle of Wayne Rooney's head, all that would happen would be that he whistled when he ran. <laughs> Just had a baby, didn't he, Rooney? He must have been an asset at the bath. Look, Colin Donapoo with a fish. <laughs> <laughs>